Good morning, friends, and welcome to our e-worship service this morning. I'm glad that you've chosen to join us as we gather together as brothers and sisters in Christ this morning in the space of worship. As we gather together, welcome. My name is Raymond. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a Methodist minister serving in the Mahali Circuit of the Methodist Church of Southern Africa, and I want to invite you to participate in our service as you feel welcome. So, friends, welcome. Welcome as we gather as brothers and sisters in Christ this morning, as we come and we seek God in worship in its various forms in our service this morning. As has been our custom over the past few months during this national lockdown, we, we've lit a candle as a reminder of the presence of Christ with us. I'm going to invite you to grab your candle and something to light it with, that as we light our candles this morning, we're reminded that Christ is with us. As we light our candles, we, we also join with each other in community with one another as we come in unison and remember that the light of Christ, the same Christ and his light, shines in our homes as it does in those that surround us today and in the various spaces in our community and around the world. So let us light our candles as we remind and are reminded that the light of Christ shines into the darkness of our world. That though the world has tried to overcome it, Though darkness has tried to overcome the light, it has never succeeded, and it never will. With that in mind, we come to a moment of prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving God, as we come to you this morning in this time of worship, we, we come and we say thank you for your presence, your grace, your love. That you are with us is a wonderful and marvelous thing. That as we gather as your children this morning in this time of worship, that you, Father, are with us. And as we come to you, we just ask more of you now. Open our eyes, our hearts to your leading and your directing as we gather. We ask, help us, Almighty God, to worship you as you are worthy of all our worship and praise. But as we come into this moment, Father, we, we're mindful of the sin that we have committed through things that we have done, through things that we've left undone and should have done. Sins of omission and commission. And I invite you, friends, in the, the quiet of this prayer to lift up your sins, your confession of sin to God. So, Father, as we lift up this, our confession of sin to you this morning, we thank you that you hear it, that, that you are able to do exceedingly beyond what we can ever imagine and think of. And part of that is, is the forgiveness of our sins, Almighty God, that you have made a way through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, to pay the price for our sins. And that out of love for us, you paid that price and that you give it to us as a gift. And as we receive that, Almighty God, we thank you that we enter into relationship with you. As we've confessed our sins, Father, we, we hear the words of grace that you have given us. Your sins are forgiven. Go and sin no more. And we pray, Father, that, that you, through the Holy Spirit, would help us, strengthen us to turn away from these areas of sin in our lives and back to you, Almighty God. Strengthen us, because we can't do this ourselves. We need your help, Almighty God. So God and direct as only you can. For we ask this in your precious name, Jesus, now and always. Amen. So friends, as we gather as the forgiven children of God this morning, the peace of the Lord be with you. And I hear you saying, and also with you, Raymond. So friends, the peace of the Lord be with us in all moments and all situations. As we, we continue as a, the forgiven children of God to journey with God in relationship with God and relationship with one another. As we Come this morning from the various traditions. We, we celebrate Heritage Sunday, with Heritage Day having been on this past Thursday. And we come in the variety and the diversity of who we are as the children of God, from our various traditions and our heritages. And we, we come together as a community of faith in this time. And we, we share our common faith through sharing the prayer that Jesus taught us. I'm going to be praying in English, and I want to encourage you, whichever language is easiest for you, 
to pray the Lord's Prayer along with me. Let's pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We ask that you give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Friends, I'd like to encourage you to take a moment after our service to read through the notices which are found within the video description of this video. I'd also like to encourage you during the course of the coming week to keep an eye on our WhatsApp info groups for, for valuable information with regards to the reopening of our church sites for in-person worship. I'm hoping to have some good news for us in that department later on during the coming week. I'd also like to remind you that once we resume our in-person worship services, we will continue to make our e-service offerings available on a Sunday as well. So we'll have our 8 o'clock sermon e-service, our 8.30 children's e-service, and our 9 a.m. worship e-service, as well as our daily reflections and devotions that are made available through our WhatsApp info groups as well. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank those who give so generously into the life of our church at this time. Thank you. As you give to God and we receive it through the church, we utilize your tithes and your offerings for the sustaining work of God's church, of sustaining our sites that we have, as well as reaching out with the gospel of Jesus Christ for healing and for transformation into the world in which we find ourselves, particularly during this, this difficult and abnormal time. So thank you for your generosity. Friends, if you're joining us today and you're from another faith community, I'd like to encourage you to give into your faith community. If you want to give in to us, please find the banking details that are found within our notices. And you're more than welcome to, to give your tithes and offerings into our churches as well. If you're struggling to give friends electronically, please do reach out to me. My contact details are in the descriptions or to one of the society stewards of the society to which you worship. So that we can assist you by either meeting at the, our church site or by collecting them and spending some time with you in prayer at your home as well. With that, we come to a time of prayer, lifting up our giving to God as well as the business of this God's church. Let's pray. So, Father, we give you thanks and praise that you are able to do exceedingly beyond what we could ever imagine or think of. That you are the one who gives us what we have and you bless us and continue to bless us in the ways in which you do. As we grow in relationship with you, Father, and we give out of love for you of our tithes, our offerings, of our time, of our talents. We thank you that you receive them and use them for the furtherment of your kingdom. Mighty God, we give them with grateful and thankful hearts. And ask that as you receive them, that you would give those that administer it wisdom and guiding. Father, we thank you that you guide us in this time of, of looking at reopening our church sites, but also of being a community of faith in these abnormal times. As we begin to discover what a new normal looks like, we ask your guiding and your directing. For we ask this in your precious name, Jesus, now and always. Amen. So friends, as we gather around the Word of God this morning, we have two readings that we're going to be taking a look at this morning from the Word of God. The first is from Ephesians 4 verses 1 to 6, and the second is from Galatians 3 verses 26 to 29. I'm going to put the words on the screen. If you have a Bible nearby, I'd like to encourage you to grab it so that we are able to go through the reading together. So the words are now on the screen. Ephesians 4 verses 1 to 6 from the New International Version. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you've received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Our second reading is from Galatians 3 verses 26 to 29, again from the New International Version. And reads as follows. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. 
if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Amen. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, as we approach your holy scriptures this morning, we thank you that you speak to us through them. That as we draw near to them and as we reflect upon them, that you would guide us in this moment, Almighty God. It is a wonderful thing that you that you reach out to us through scripture, that you speak into our hearts and lives. And we thank you that you are able to, to move and shape us into who you want us to be as your children. So, Father, we come to your word as we are this morning. Holy Spirit, guide us, we pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of each and every one of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer, Jesus Christ, our Lord, now and always. Amen. Friends, on Thursday, the 24th of September, we celebrated Heritage Day. Now, I'm not too sure how you celebrate it. Some had bribes, some did various other activities to remember their heritage and the heritage that has formed them to be who they are. But today, friends, as we, we gather as the, the people of God, the community of Christian faith, we're celebrating Heritage Sunday. Now, on, on Thursday, on Heritage Day, I started the day by going for a cycle, as I often do. And while I'm cycling, I spend time reflecting on a question related to Heritage Day. The question being, what makes us who we are and what informs our heritage? You got it? What makes us who we are and what informs our heritage? Friends, with this question of our heritage in mind, we, we continue our We Believe Spring Sermon Series, through which we're exploring the Apostles' Creed as a framework for Christian belief. I, I want to spend a moment reminding you of the words of the Apostles' Creed. And I'm going to invite you to, to say the words with me. I've just put them on the screen. And I'm going to invite you to, to read the words of the Apostles' Creed with me. You ready? Let's say together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. So friends, so far in our series, we've spent time examining what we believe. Firstly about God the Father Almighty, and about Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord. Then last week, we spent time looking at this line, I believe in the Holy Spirit. Through that, we, we affirmed, firstly, our faith in our one God, who was expressed in three personhoods, the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We affirmed our belief in the work of the Holy Spirit within our lives, bringing transformation, into our lives, which we see through the development of the fruit of the Spirit within us, which become part of who we are and eventually work its way into our lives and we begin working it out through the way in which we live. The fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. The fruit of the Spirit. We also affirmed our belief in the work of the Holy Spirit through the church with the Holy Spirit empowering, guiding, and directing the church to become active in the world around us. God using the church as an instrument of healing and transformation into the world around us. But today, as we continue our journey through the Apostles' Creed and, and we explore our Christian heritage, we're encountered, we encounter what for some is a, is a very challenging part of the Apostles' Creed. For some, as a stumbling block in a moment of difficulty. In the part in which we read, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints. It, it should be read, I believe in the Holy Catholic Church and the communion of saints. Now, friends, the point of confusion for some is the words Catholic Church. The confusion 
and even for some the stumbling block comes in the thinking that as we say these words we're confessing our as we confess our christian beliefs we're ascribing ourselves to the catholic church denomination something that that really clear and that we belong to the catholic church now I, i've even had people upset with me for for using these words when i've asked them to confess our shared faith through the Apostles Creed at the service of baptism and confirmation who have after the service come to me very concerned and raised their concern that, that they're Methodists and not Catholics. Now I've left the words on the screen today because I want you to see what I'm talking about. If you're wondering about this we and you may be concerned about it you see the words holy Catholic Church. You'll notice that it's a that is a small C, not a capital C. So it's not not the name of the Catholic Church, but rather a confession of the universal church. The word Catholic actually means universal. And I want to assure you that that we're simply confessing our faith in the universal church. That we are connected with our brothers and sisters in Christ, with other churches. And people who attend other denominations and perhaps worship in, in ways that are different to the ways in which we worship. We, we are confessing that we believe that all Christian churches have a place in the kingdom of God. And that all Christian churches who confess Jesus as Lord have a place in the body of Christ. And that we need to work with each other as co-workers for the kingdom of God. Jesus teaches us in, in Mark 9, verses 38 to 41, which reads as follows. Teacher, said John, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we told him to stop, because he was not one of us. Don't stop him, said Jesus. For no one who does a miracle in my name can the next moment say anything bad about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Truly, I tell you, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah, is certainly not going to lose their reward. So friends, the, the universal church, the, the, Catholic, the holy universal church of Christ. As we, as we gather, this falls into the second line, the communion of saints, which I want to unpack as very simply using the word communion by, by dividing it into two, common union of the saints. In other words, we have things in common with each other. As Methodists, we have things in common with our Anglican, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Catholic. We have things in common with our, our charismatic and Pentecostal brothers and sisters in faith. And I want to use that, that, that word communion as common union. Because it reminds us that, that as we come together, we have things in common that bind us together in union with each other. In friendship and relationship as the children of God. So with this in mind, I'd like to ask us, what is our Christian heritage and where did we get it from? Now, I believe, as I said, I reflected much on, on my cycle on Thursday about where our heritage comes from. I believe that our heritage is taught to us by those who have gone before us, our parents and grandparents, our ancestral family before them. They have imparted into us a legacy of who we are and whose we are. We've been taught by them either directly or indirectly and by others in our family lines to act in certain ways, to follow certain customs, to speak in certain ways, to dress in certain ways, to do things, traditions in certain ways. I mean, just take a look at, at how people build a bright fire. I mean, some people use briquettes. I, I personally prefer briquettes myself. And some people simply put the, put the fire lighters and just throw it in a big pile. Uh, on top of the fire lights once they lit the briquettes or they use a fire starter. Some people put the briquettes and then build a, a pyramid on top of the briquettes so that it, it lights. Some people use wood and uh, they they'd either make a teepee with some kindling and some fire lights in the middle and it burns from there. Some people stack it at different angles. How, how do you make a fire? Because there's many different ways of making a fire in order to fry our meat. The other way of and, and another situation is the way in which we cook our food. I mean, take a look at potato salad, for example, and the, the many varieties of ways of making potato salad, or pup for that matter. The way we cook our meat and, and the way we prefer our meat 
is something that's been passed on to us by, by those who've gone before. Other things have also been passed on to us. In other words, the way we interact with and speak with other people, our biases, our predisposed ideas about other people. Also our mindset on how we use our money, our resources, and our possessions. Now friends, today I want us not to focus on what makes us different, but rather what unifies us. In other words, our shared Christian heritage. Now I'm, I'm aware that this is a massive topic. And we, we, we're going through it week by week, this being week four of our I Be- We Believe uh, series. And I, I want to just briefly unpack the fundamental aspects of our Christian heritage that bind us together as brothers and sisters in Christ. As we, we look at what the Word of God has to say to us as brothers and sisters in Christ. The first reading I want to look at is from Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 to 10. And I want you just to, to imagine this scene with me for a moment. This is John sharing with us a God-given vision of a worshipping community. After this I looked, and, and there before me was a great multitude There was that no one was able to count. From every nation, tribe, and people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Now can you imagine that that scene that John describes and that that God-given vision on the Isle of Patmos? As as he has this vision of the worshipping community of God from every tribe, every people, every language coming together together. Worshipping God together. They come before the throne of grace and they in, dressed in righteousness. They, they dressed in robes of white and righteousness. And they cry out before the, the Lamb of God. A single message. A unified message. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. This is a worship of the community of God. Regardless of, of where they've come from tribe, language, nation, standing before God. But this is what what John sees. What does this community look like for us today as the people of God, as brothers and sisters in Christ today? And I want to use our readings this morning, firstly from Ephesians 4 and then from from Galatians 3, to, to answer that question. I want to firstly say that we need to be united in Christ. Paul in Ephesians 4 verses 1 to 6 tells us what what this community looks like. As he says, As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you've received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in the bonds of peace. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bonds of peace. And listen to these words, friends. There is one body and one Spirit. Just as you are called to one hope, when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Now this is an essential part of of being the holy and Catholic, the universal church in common union with others and in sharing in our Christian heritage. We've all heard and, and placed our trust in what we have been told about Jesus and his saving work upon the cross on our behalf. We've all come to faith in Christ through this, and we've become Christians, little Christs, through this knowledge and placing our personal and communal faith in him. Now this brings that commonality, that common unity between us as brothers and sisters in Christ, that we have one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. Could we perhaps say, who is over all the children of God, who is through all the children of God and in all the children of God, as brothers and sisters in Christ. Paul helps us understand this further in his letter to the Galatians, as he writes in Galatians 3, 26 and 29, when he says, So in Christ Jesus, we are all children of God through faith. Friends, I want you to hear that again. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you were baptized into Christ. 
and have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Friends, Jesus, through his gospel teachings, teaches us that we need to be a welcoming community, a family of God that welcomes all people, regardless of age, gender, social standing, economic position, skin color, ethnic grouping, nationality, sexual orientation, whatever lines along which we divide ourselves don't apply in this community, in God's community. So friends, our Christian heritage hinges on the knowledge that God is the ultimate authority and that God has made us who we are, each of us in the image of God as we are. And God has called us to avoid dividing ourselves, but rather uniting through the unity that comes from being the children of God and our common union with each other, equally loved by God. So, friends, as I close this morning, as we affirm our belief in the Holy Catholic Church and the communion of saints, we're affirming that we form part of God's family, along with our sisters and brothers from all the other churches in Christian faith. Those who are with us now, those who have gone before us, and those who will come as well. We affirm that, that we need to acknowledge and build a relationship with our brothers and sisters in faith from other church denominations and traditions, overcoming the boundaries that that have been put in place and actually loving each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. We, We affirm that we have a common union and a shared Christian heritage with all of our sisters and brothers in Christ. So friends, as we celebrate Heritage Sunday, we as the children of God, Diverse in our earthly heritage as we are, we have a shared Christian heritage that we are loved by God and have responded to this love through placing our faith in the saving work of Jesus as our Lord and Savior and becoming part of God's family through our baptism, through our shared belief, through connection with God. And as the children of God, our our shared Christian heritage involves us adopting Christian characteristics virtues and practices, and living out our relationship with God and others unashamedly. But it is also a challenge for us to be an example for others, to leave a good Christian heritage for our children and others, for those who look up to us and those coming after us. Friends, as I close, I'd like to invite you this week to spend some time in prayer with God. Make some time to to spend in conversation with God in prayer. And in that moment, thank God for our Christian heritage, for God's love and for the saving work that is, is common and binds us together as brothers and sisters in Christ. But also spend time examining what heritage you have and what heritage in your life is a divisive place, bringing division between you and others. And lift that up to God and ask God to help you with that. Perhaps also spend time giving thanks for your Christian heritage and what that looks like for you. And to examine what what you are giving to those who are following you in faith. What are they seeing when they look up to you? With that in mind, let us come to a moment of prayer. Father, we thank you for your scriptures and for your holy message to us this morning. We ask that you'd open our eyes and our hearts to your leading and your directing this morning. That as we come to you, you would help us to to unpack and know what to do with what we've heard this morning. So guide and direct us, we pray, as only you can, almighty God. Open our hearts to your leading and your directing. That we may enter into a place of deep intimacy with you and with others. And Father, we pray that you will help every member of the church universal to live in harmony with each other. May we be united in love and enable us to pray with the mind of Christ, to be guided by the Spirit of God, and to glorify you with hearts and voice in all that we do. Keep us from worldly ways that seek to bring division, but rather may our lives be a witness of your love. 
not only in what we say, but in what we do as well. Father, we ask that you'd guide us in understanding what it is you want us to do. And Holy Spirit, help us to hear exactly what we need to do and help us to be able to put that in practice in our lives as well. So help us, we pray, as only you can. For we ask this in your precious name, Jesus, now and always. Amen. Friends, as we come to the end of our time of worship this morning, remember that, that we have a Christian heritage that we need to pass on to others by living out what we believe in God and in Christ. So friends, I want to encourage you in this coming week just to live out your life as a child of God in union and common union with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us perhaps reach out to those who we know are Christian, perhaps from other churches, and just to, to acknowledge them as our brothers and sisters in faith, but also to reach out within our communities of faith to each other, maybe through a telephone call, just to check in and see how we are doing as brothers and sisters in Christ at this time as well. As we, we part our ways, we, we bless each other with what's known as the benediction. And I'm going to put the words on the screen. I want to encourage you to, to say these words with me as we bless each other with these scriptural words as we go our separate ways. So let us say it together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. Friends, be blessed, stay safe, and know that God is always with you in every moment and every situation, now and always. Amen.